Hi everyone, in this video we'll have a look at the different ways we can deploy a big IPF5 LTM appliance and in particular we will have a look at a couple of issues which are quite common in the load balancing world and how we can overcome them. So the first one is inline deployment. With inline deployment traffic comes in on one interface and leaves the F5 on another interface and the interfaces are part of a different subnet, VLANs and possibly even switches and this is why it's called inline. The F5 is inline of the traffic so you have to go through the F5 to get to the other side and having a look from the left hand side we have a client and it connects to a virtual IP address that is configured on the virtual server on the outside interface which is the 172.20.20.1 address and as the F5 is a full-blown proxy it works out which server it should send the request to based on the load balancing method in place and creates a new connection from the F5 to the server. So then it sends that connection to the server depending on its load balancing method. Let's say server one in this example. So the server then gets the connection and responds to it. And as its default gateway is the F5 appliance, it responds back to the F5. And then the F5 responds back to the client. So in this deployment method, the connection is between the client and the server and all traffic is via the F5 appliance. So this is the cleanest method and this is the most ideal way which where the client connects to the server via the F5 and then the server responds back to the client via the F5. So the F5 sees everything and that's what we want in an ideal world. But looking at a particular issue, it's called direct server return or asymmetric routing. Everything looks the same as the inline mode which we just went through where there's an external subnet on the left and an internal subnet on the right and the client sends a request to the VIP address so the virtual server address that is the VIP address which is 172.20.20.1 and as before the F5 does the same thing it computes the load balancing algorithm and then load balances the request to the server so let's say server 1 again in this example however this is where the issue is the server for example has a different default gateway configured which is not the F5 appliance and is the router down here in this case so it sends the traffic back to the router instead not the F5 appliance and this is just the way routing works as well so to route back to the client which is on a different subnet the server will send the response back to their default gateway and if their default gateway is the router and not the F5 appliance then that's where the connection will go on the return path now the issue is the client receives the packet directly from the server which it was not actually expecting it was expecting the return traffic from the F5 VIP address, the VIP address, as that was the address the client initiated a connection to in the first place. So the client gets a response from another address, which is the server address, and will therefore drop the traffic. It's not expecting the traffic from the server address, it was expecting the traffic from the F5 VIP address on the F5 appliance. So the way we can overcome this issue, what we can do to fix the problem is to use a feature called Network Address Translation or NAT or in this particular case it's called Source NAT because what we want to do is change the source address the source IP address to be of the F5's own interface address within the network where the pool exists the pool is the two servers in this example and now the F5 changes the source address to be its local interface within that same subnet within the subnet of the servers which will be this address 10.10.10.1 and when the servers respond to the client they will respond directly to that source address which is now the F5 appliance and not the original client and it's able to do this because the F5 address is within the same subnet as the servers so they don't need to do any routing they don't need to use their default gateway so as no router is required here this resolves the issue and by doing this it means the F5 will receive the connection and send the connection back to the client and the client will now receive the traffic back from F5 which it was expecting. So using SNAT is a way to overcome the issue where when the servers have a different default gateway. If the servers had the gateway of the F5 appliance that would be like the previous example inline mode and we wouldn't have this issue but because the servers are using the root as the default gateway this is where this issue has been introduced and using the SNAT means the servers can respond directly to the SNAT address 
and within the F5 GUI to be able to do this I've not got an F5 GUI up and running but the way we would do this is we would configure the source address translation of the virtual server with a feature called AutoMap which automatically configures the source address to be of the F5 IP address of the interface facing the local servers within that subnet. So that's the way you would do it within the GUI. You would go into the virtual server and you would find the source address translation feature option and then you would turn on AutoMap within there. However, the other way to resolve this is if you change the F5 to be the default gateway for the service, just like in the previous example we had a look at. But if you can't do this and you wanted the service to initiate traffic, for example, out to the internet and you wanted them to go out via the router as the default gateway or something else different from the F5 appliance, such as a firewall, then source address translation is your only option here to fix this issue. And with source address translation being in place now, now all traffic in both directions traverse the F5 and the F5 can also see the full length of the traffic. And so another bonus point is you can enable other features to inspect or manipulate the traffic further because the F5 can see it in both directions. Finally, one arm mode or one arm deployment. In one arm deployment, the virtual server IP address is in the same VLAN and therefore within the same subnet as the servers. And this is a very useful deployment method simply because you're not going to have any impact on your servers with any outages or should I say any lengthy downtime anyway. And it's a very simple method to deploy as well. And this is where the term comes from, one arm, because it's using the same interface to receive and process traffic and then computes the destination via the load balancing algorithm before sending it onto the servers via the same interface. If we have a look at this uh, diagram in detail, every device, they're on the same subnet here. So we have the VIP on 10.10.10.5, server 1 is on 10.10.10.10, server 2 10.10.10.20. And we have these connecting devices down here as well. Whatever the devices are, in this case a client and another server and a firewall all on the same subnet as the VIP address and the two servers. So here we can see the virtual server which is the service that listens to the request from the client and it has the virtual IP address configured which is an IP address in the same subnet as the servers 10.10.10.5 and when any of these devices down here within the same subnet in this case 10.10.10.50 or 51 or 52 sends a request the traffic hits the VIP address which is 10.10.10.5 the F5 computes it and sends it on to one of the two servers, 10.10.10.10 or 10.10.10.20. And because the client who initiated the connection is within the same subnet, these clients down here, the servers respond directly to the client. And this is where the issue is. They see the client IP address as the source and the client is within the same subnet. So they work out its IP address and respond directly to the client. As this is how it works when they're in the same subnet. Again, no router required here. So they will return the traffic directly and do not need to use a gateway to perform any routing. This again can be an issue because the client was expecting traffic back from the VIP address on the F5 appliance and not the server. So the connection again is going to be dropped. And again, the resolution to resolve this issue would again be to use source NAT, just like in the previous example, and turn on the automap feature. So the F5 changes the source IP address to that of its own address. Then the servers will reply to the F5 and not the original device that initiated the traffic because the servers would see the new source address that the F5 changed it to being its own address. And the servers would say, oh, okay, that's the source address the return traffic will be sent back to the F5. Then the F5 would create a new connection because it's a proxy and send that connection back to the originated client. So this way using source address translation again, source NAT address translation again, means all traffic is going via the F5 and that resolves the issue. And that's it for this video everyone. So that video was just a quick video on how we can deploy the F5 appliance and different ways we can deploy it. And we had a look at a couple of issues where we can turn on source-based network address translation to overcome those issues. Thanks for watching.